through every main feature in Spokestack Maker. And for each one, I'll stop a bit and say what the feature is, uh, what you generally use it for. We'll walk through the UI a little bit on the site. And then I'll just talk really briefly about how to use it in an app. Um, as you can see over there on the over there on the left side, there are four main services, four main features that we'll be talking about. But luckily, the the UI is is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're a little biased to say that maybe, but the UI walkthrough shouldn't be too overwhelming. We're not we're not going to be showing a lot of flowcharts or a lot of complicated things. All the complication is in the back end. You don't have to worry about it. So we'll start at text to speech. Uh, apparently the unanimous favorite feature that we have. And the text-to-speech interface is right here. It lets you sample from our existing voices. Spokesack free up here at the top is the default one. And that's the one we mentioned as having been recorded in a Hollywood studio um, for many hours. And the rest of them have uh, varying degrees of, of data associated with them. For each model, you can see um, the source data that was involved in it. But what we're interested in uh, for the maker walkthrough is the custom models you can make. So you go up here to the top, create a model, and you can go ahead and give it a name. I'll name it live stream, because why not? And once you've named your model, you go straight into adding utterances to it, adding recording samples. And to do this, uh, this is your AI voice clone. And since deep fakes are a thing and deep fakes are a bad thing, we will choose the scripts that you record. We have a bunch of scripts on the back end that you will record using your computer microphone. A uh, USB microphone is great, gives a little better quality. And that serves as a form of consent. You can't just upload audio of, of a celebrity, of, of a relative or whatever without their consent to create a voice clone of them. You have to do it using our interface and that's sort of how we get that layer of safety in there. So I'll show you how, how the recording actually works. You click record. This modal dialogue will pop up. And we've got some instructions down here. I'll just summarize them for you. Use the button up here to start recording. And once I do that, a bar, a progress bar will start counting down. You have 10 seconds to finish the scripts. All of these that we show you should fit within that 10 seconds pretty easily. And as I'm recording, you'll notice um, the words will light up blue. That's speech recognition on the back end going along and verifying uh, the, the words that, that it's hearing. The ASR is, it's meant as a guide, not a judge. So it's, if it doesn't catch all the words, but you know, you said the phrase that's on the screen, go ahead and click upload here over on the right. It's not going to penalize you or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's there to kind of, kind of backstop things and say, if there was a, if there was a real error, um, with your microphone or whatever, you can click preview over here to, to double check that and see if you want to go ahead and upload the sample. So I'll just do this first one here. Well, here's a story for you. And if it uh, detects all the phrase completely, it's going to stop the progress bar early and the whole thing will light up blue and you're good to go. Uh, if it doesn't, if not all the words are blue, you will, the progress bar will continue to count down and you can go ahead and click this button again to stop recording and upload your sample or preview it if you want to. I'll just I'll just leave this alone for now. So the thing, one of the great things about our TTS voice clone is that no other service that I know of matches our the quality that you get from the resulting voice, the time investment that you as a user put in. We require about roughly speaking, five minutes of audio. So you see down here at the bottom, um, we require a minimum of 75 samples. So that, that works out to about four or five minutes when you average out the, the script times. And so no one can match our quality at the time investment at our price point. Uh, Maker's very reasonably priced. I would actually go so far to say is that I don't think any other service that I've seen can match two of those things. 
you, you see services that will um, offer to give you a, a true Hollywood TTS voice, and that's going to cost you multiple, multiple thousands of dollars. You see other services that will let you do it self-service that require uh, more audio. Um, but I, I don't think anyone matches us on all those criteria or even, even two of them. So I said I was going to talk about what you use each feature for. And uh, clearly, a custom TTS voice is a replacement for the voices provided by uh, the big platforms. So you can even go so far as to use your spoke stack TTS voice in an Alexa skill instead of uh, the default Alexa voice. You can generate all your responses dynamically, run it through our TTS. It runs faster than real time, so you're not going to have any have any latency issues where Alexa kicks it back to you and says we couldn't get the response in, in the amount of time we needed. We have a tutorial up on how to how to do that actually for Alexa specifically. Uh, you can use it in in a home automation setting. Uh, this is great for doing notifications uh, via home assistant. You know, like you're not you're not home in the afternoon. You send a message to your home assistant system, and it announces in your voice, "Hey, it's time to do your homework." So, and then of course there's the there's the whole prank scenario where you can make Alexa sound like you and. I'm not, I'm not going to guess what you want, want it to say, but whatever. So how you would use this in an actual app is through our libraries that Noel mentioned earlier. Um, you put in your spoke stack credentials, and that will give you access to any of the voices that you have trained on your account. And so you have a name right here for the voice, and you just pass that name in with your TTS call. And it'll the audio will come back in in that model in that voice. So moving along, uh, because that took me a while a while to do. Let's go on to wake word. So a uh, wake word is we're pretty familiar with this by now. It's the thing that says that responds when you say Alexa or OK or Hey Google. And my phone probably just triggered for saying that. Uh, so it's what's used to activate. Uh, speech recognition on the back end. So before the wake word happens, the app is not actively listening, not processing audio. After the wake word happens, it starts processing what you say until you stop talking. And then that's treated as the command to the app. So one important thing to note about our wake words in Spokestack is just because it says wake word singular in the model, you can have multiple actual wake words or wake phrases. So if you want to um, use your app name and then also support hey in front of your app name or okay in front of your app name like, like Google, uh, you can do that. And so let's, uh, before I go into the creating your own model though, I will note since Noel just mentioned this, that we have a, a test tool right, right in the page here and this runs Node Spoke Stack. There might be a little bit of microphone interference with my headphones and a little bit of lag because of the live streaming but but let's see let's see how well this works for the stream scenario spokestack there we go so it actually it did work without a without too much delay there so you'll get a when it detects it, you'll get a, a confidence value along with that. And I was pretty clear with my pronunciation, and there's not a lot of background noise or anything. So I was pretty confident. Uh, let's, and then once you create your own models, they're going to show up here in the list as well. Uh, I forgot to mention that in the TTS section, uh, your models show up at the top here uh, when they're made. So let's go ahead and make a new wake word model. Call this one live stream as well. And like I said, you can have multiple uh, wake phrases or wake words that wake up your app. So that's what an utterance is. It's a single instance. It's uh, spoke stack is one utterance. Hey, spoke stack would be a second utterance. And so what you do is you, you don't want to make these too long, but one, two, even maybe even three short words should be fine. And once you enter your name here, the record button is going to pop up something very similar to the TTS thing, except instead of our scripts, it's going to be your utterance. 
Uh, so I'm actually going to go ahead and go all the way to training one of these so I can show you the next, next step. Live stream. Live stream. Live stream. Live stream. Okay, so we require three samples per utterance uh, to train a model. And the rule for this is the same as the rule for TTS. The more samples, the better. Um, but no matter how many samples you give a personal model like this that we're offering on the maker tier, we wouldn't recommend deploying it in a production mobile app that's going to go around the world or even around the country because these models, especially wake word and keyword models, are small. They're small so that they can run on a mobile device in near real time, as close to 50 times a second as possible. And so they're highly optimized. And the voices you train them on are going to be the voices they're most accurate with. It, that's not a guarantee it won't work with other voices, but as soon as you start throwing in different accents, different styles of speech and everything like that, um, your accuracy level is going to go down. So in order to train a full production universal wake word model, you need data from a lot of people with different voice characteristics. So you obviously don't have that when you're recording um, yourself. So if you want that, we can also do that. So get in touch. But I'm going to go ahead and click train here since I have the minimum number of samples. And you'll see the box grays out. We got a little blue progress bar down here at the bottom. Uh, usually command models, wake word and keyword models take uh, just a few minutes to train, but they can take longer depending on volume of uh, requests and things like that. So you'll also get an email when it's done training and it'll the page will refresh and it'll show up up here in your tester. But we're not going to wait for that, that whole thing here. Uh, we're going to move on to keyword. And the thing that wake word and keyword models are very similar, but for one, um, one key difference, two, depending on how you split them up. A keyword model is actually a form of limited ASR. So a keyword model will actually give you back the transcript of what the user said. A wake word is just going to send you an event. It's going to say, uh, I heard the wake word, uh, ASR should start now. A keyword model is going to say, I heard spoke stack, or I heard um, another keyword that you, that you put in there. And so a keyword model is useful for lots of limited resource environments. Like this works entirely offline, just like the keyword model. And it can work for a number of different commands. So say you're making an app that is meant to play music while someone is running off in the woods and they don't have uh, internet connectivity. You make a keyword model with things like volume up, volume down, pause, skip, next, back, things like that. And you can control your app without running a full ASR model or doing any cloud requests or anything like that. So the UI is very simple. Uh, oops, sorry, I meant to say very similar to the wake word model, except for the fact that instead of utterances down here, you have keywords. And I will tell you what that means as soon as I fill this out. Each keyword can have multiple utterances. And this is, let me actually, I'm going to change the text here, this one to really show you what I mean. Um, let's say that my keyword model is going to be for a camera. So I'm going to make a keyword that says photo as opposed to video because smartphone cameras do photos and videos. So my utterances are going to be take picture. I'm going to add another one that just matches the name I have up there, a photo. And so what this means is, go back here, I have one keyword, which is photo, and two utterances under that. So whenever a user says, take picture or photo, my app is going to get the transcript of photo, of the keyword name. And that's to make it easier on you, to help you multiplex different commands into a single uh, canonical word or 
phrase. So make your keywords whatever are most useful for your app and then uh, put whatever different forms of that utterance, that keyword you want as utterances. And you have to record, again, three samples for each utterance. So it's not three samples per keyword. You want three samples to take picture and three samples of photo, and then, then the train button will light up. And I haven't talked yet about how to use either wake word or keyword in an app. And that is dependent on the profiles that you set up using our uh, mobile and embedded libraries. So in the Spokestack libraries, you will get an opportunity to use uh, a wake word plus a native platform ASR like Android or Apple. You can use a wake word model plus a keyword model as your ASR. And that's all um, that's all covered in in our documentation. So let's. The last thing is uh, is very straightforward, and it's something that's been a part of Spokestack from the beginning. It's the NLU import, and this is something that a, a lot of us who have made voice skills or voice enabled apps are already familiar with. This is what takes. Uh, from a full-fledged ASR, not the keyword we just talked about, but if you're accepting commands as full natural language sentences, this is what takes them and translates them into commands that your app can use. And so you provide us with uh, training data for your app that says, take a picture, snap a photo, I'll go to an intent named take photo or whatever you want to name it. And this will inform our NLU module uh, will train a TensorFlow model for it, and it also works on device. So as soon as ASR is done with its transcript, the transcript goes through NLU and a command comes back out of the NLU to your app. So when you go to make an NLU model, we support uh, a number of different platforms. You can export an existing NLU model if you've used Rasa, if you've used Alexa, if you've used uh, Dialogflow, uh, we can convert those. We do recommend that you use our training data format if you can, if you're starting from scratch or if you have the have the time to rewrite it because we support um, a few different things that those other formats don't. Uh, you can read more about that in the documentation. But all this is is a simple it's a simple file upload and. You give us a, a zip file of your Dialogflow agent or your Spokestack training data or a JSON file from Alexa, et cetera. And we will convert it. We'll send you an email when it's done. And you will be able to download a TensorFlow model. These are shared models, like it says right here, available to all accounts that you can download to, uh, to try out. These come from different sample Alexa skills that Amazon has published. and We've just replicated that functionality here so you can so you can try it out for yourself on a mobile library. And I think, let's see if the wake word is done training. The wake word is done training, and you can see how it uh how it pops up up here. And since it's done training, let's go ahead and try it with my three utterances that I gave it. Live stream. Hey, what do you know? I was not a I honestly was not actually planning to demo that, but there we go, done.